The game definitely wants you to just, like, always side with the people from, uh, the Nine Traditions. It really, like, badmouths you if you aren't all the time. If you end up, you know, God help you if, uh, you two decide that, uh, you want to support the technocracy because... Go man, have sex with Gabriel. He is pretty in a uh, wind he's, No, he's way. not technocracy, no. Oh, he's not? You can tell because of how uh, glib he was about uh, people being transported across time and space. Okay, so he's not part of the Nine Traditions and he's not technocracy? Uh, no, it never really spells it out specifically. Like they say, he's a bad person. Um, he's just straight up an infernalist. Oh. Uh, because <laughs> they're what, pretty in a windswept way. Yeah, that's what bad person means. <laughs> Okay, so we got technocracy, we got infernalists, then we have nine traditions. Got it. Okay. Um, and I was really disappointed Whoa. when I played through, there is no way to become an infernalist yourself. He just kills you if you side with him. Uh, okay, well, then I guess... <laughs> Good lord. Then no, I don't want to have sex with him. So, He's going to wind up... No nefrandy. We're going to the Nordic 8. Oh, we don't be there till 11. Hell, I sleep in. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, All right. Let's see. Alrighty. Um, so that well, they gotta register at the migration agency anyway. Yep. They're unregistered. Yeah. You know. Um. Alrighty. So lots of lines. Bring something to eat. Okay. Because you can get that at the shelter. They got food. To Presumably, them. yeah. And so this is kind of an annoying one where it actually makes you scroll up because the new thing comes down and then it scrolls too far. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. So they have your phone number. All right. And uh, she gives you prayer beads. Here. If you run into other trouble, just hold out and call to us. Really? So do you want uh, do you want prayer beads? Wow. I don't know. Um. I don't know. Let's see what the chat says. <laughs> do we want prayer beads, or are we a committed atheist? Three people here, yeah. We've gotten some other people. I kind of tend toward committed atheism. All right. But you know, I also do not want to, uh, I don't know, I haven't gotten any feedback. Uh, sure. <laughs> Let's go for, um, was that sure you want prayer beads or is that sure we're committed to atheism? <laughs> Sure, we'll get prayer beads. Let's be, let's be, um, let's be nice. Just take it. You don't have to use it. I will tell you later on, even if you take okay. it. Okay. I can have a choice. Okay, see, I don't know if I take it in my community. No, you don't, going to be you don't take okay. it and then have sex with him. Um, okay. <laughs> that's, uh, that's not what thank okay. you means. Well, Muna, Muna, I will have sex with her. Because again, that's not cheating on my boyfriend. So, uh, I think you mean Muna. Mona. Mona. Uh, Mona, oops. you know, whatever her name is. There are a couple of typos in this as well. Alrighty. Uh, so you watch the siblings walk out of the shelter into the gray mid midday gloom, where volunteer cars are waiting to drive people to the migration agency. Hopefully they won't have to queue for hours. Hopefully they won't be too cold. They will. They have food. They're fine. Hey, it's better than being in your war-torn country. That's true. So, at some point, the kitchen supervisor talks to you, and weird noise comes out. <laughs> <laughs> that happens so often. Uh, it's a collection of the weirdest ha hangover bugs you've ever had. Okay. By 3 p.m., you're ready to drop, and then you receive a Facebook message from Ricky. It simply says, you're in trouble. I can help you. Now, do you want to go and meet her? So I've only been working like four hours. Um, <laughs> apparently, I really want to go and meet her. I love, why even give me a choice? Mary, don't rush. I, Let's let chat have their input on this. <laughs> why is that a choice if there's only one? I don't understand that about the game. Do, does that make it? I mean, we had those enormously long exposition scenes. <laughs> so I don't think it's afraid of putting in too much text, but yet randomly, we just have, <laughs> can we set her on fire? I would love to. You have no idea. I would even at this point call out on my beads, but that is not my choice. All right, we're gonna meet with Ricky. 
The generic cafe is for some reason almost empty. Ricky has found a table in the corner and waves you over. As always, she's immaculately dressed. Her blonde bangs razor straight over heavy black sunglasses. Mm -hmm. Do you understand why I wanted to talk to you, she says? I'm guessing it has something to do with last night. That's right. What kind of lecture are you going to give me, then? A at least we know she doesn't believe in magic either, so it will be a slightly different variation on the same yeah. exposition scene we've had right. twice. Other already. people have talked to me. Oh, no. Now, Ricky is not pretty in a windswept way. Maybe. What about <laughs> magic? Magic! No, you just say it magic. There's oh, no K on I don't, I don't do a K on the end. A really hard K. Ricky shakes her head. Right, okay. I'm gonna assume that was the guy in dreads? Or that Middle Eastern couple? What if it were? You I get all defensive. You need to stay away from them. Why? <laughs> What's going on here, Ricky? What do you know? She leans forward across the table. Whatever they told you, it's nonsense. Yeah, it sounded like nonsense. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and what is it nonsense, then? Julia, you have a talent. It expressed itself last night in a way that you might not understand. But it can all be explained, okay? scientifically explained ancient technology <laughs> yeah unfortunately i have to wait for the thing to yep. come up. yep 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 oh really how i don't know if you're ready for that just yet suffice to say that you have a skill and i'd like to help you develop that skill i'm part of an organization that helps people like you. Do you have skills? <laughs> it's not cheating if it's gay. <laughs> I do. Ricky smiles at you. I have talent similar to yours. Now, those people, she jabs her thumb in an abstract direction, will tell you all kinds of things. That guy, I know of him. He's a stoner. And the couple, they come from a culture less scientifically minded than ours. Let's face it, they have all kinds of religious superstitions. They'll try to drag you into it. Yeah, she did give me prayer beads. Yep. You know. So. That's where we are there. So here's where we get uh, something kind of confusing again, but I'll wait for you to catch up. Yeah. Okay. How do you know? You don't know them. I know the type, Ricky says. Devout Muslims. Mystics. They deal in, if I'm going to be blunt, mumbo-jumbo. So they're devout Muslims, but wearing skinny jeans, going to raves, but not drinking mm -hmm. out. There's really no It's very confusing on the whole devout Muslim thing. Yeah. I don't know if you're going to get a little more liberal with your hit of the continue before you're end, at the end of That's the... That's uh, I should probably do that. And then that might help us out. Keep this flowing. Sorry, I'll, I'll complain after hitting continue from now on. Yes, yes. Hit continue, then complain. Alrighty. Really? Really. And what with all the refugees coming in now, there are going to be more and more of them. Their influence will spread. My organization is trying to contain it. I see. Now, she doesn't work down there with me at the Nordic Aid. No, she works with Alex at the, uh... At the makerspace with the, the little girls. Where he fiddles with his stuff. Yeah, and she teaches mm -hmm. children about technology, which is evil, because okay. the nine traditions are always good. Right. All right, so... All so right, kids. So, phone chirps, <laughs> and she takes a quick look at it. Listen, I can't stay, but give it some thought, yeah? Yeah, my number? All right. Do we want Ricky's... No. Nah. Ricky's a her, I yes. believe. Just yes. so we Just so we get genders correctly here in... Uh, um, so, uh, so, no, I do... Uh, no, I don't have her number. All right. Or do you say yes? But no, we'll say no. I don't have your number. 
right. we won't lie because lying is bad. This is also kind of conf a confusing one because, like, I wasn't sure originally if yeah meant we like got it, like we had it all the time, because it doesn't say like mm -hmm. you lie or something like that. Right. Well, it's that whole sure or I'm sorry thing, yeah, right? So I think this is what you do to get the number. Okay. So so. Um, all right. There we go. Well, Okay. So when you shake your head, she reaches for your phone and thumbs the number into it. There, she says. Okay. Just call me if you need anything. It's voice activated. It Ricky, hit, don't you lose my number? It hits you when she left. The screen was locked. How the hell did she do that? <sighs> All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Throw it away. <laughs> Throw it away. Get get rid of the phone. All right. <laughs> Um, all right. How did she do that? Oh, my goodness. In normal life. Apparently, I'm posting this again. This is another again? blog post. Oh, God. Can we just get through it? Because uh, we really don't care. You get undressed with your, their eyes. Um, yeah. yeah, men do that. That's what they do. All right. Let's move on. All right. Oh, he's touching your breast? Wow. Wow. Whoa. Hey, things are going weird here. Uh, his gaze is hard and fierce. He demands to know my name. He asks where my husband is. I ask, why do you want to know? <laughs> uh, real women don't work outside. All right. So, uh, so apparently because I'm working outside, you can touch my breast. So I uh, guess this is, I mean. You know what? I don't think they're going to call me a racist if he's <laughs> touching my breast. I think I have a legitimate complaint then. The game is kind of definitely one-sided on, like, the migrant issue. I think this is, like, their thing where maybe some, like, radical Islamic beliefs are bad, I guess. Like, the... the so, alright. So I'm working out so he can touch my... I love that, that they'll say it was a misunderstanding. He touched my breast. <laughs> That's not a misunderstanding. It's yeah. not like some in some way that's okay. Like, oh, it's a cultural thing. So, yeah, this is, I guess, their their one brief segment to say maybe uh, intensely fundamentalist views on religion are also bad, but that's well, like the if, one we get. Well, if this guy is, he shouldn't be touching random women's breasts. I'm sure that's somehow not okay. But we're done with that now. Uh, the celestial yeah. chorus is always right, and technology is evil. Sure, Let's we're coming back around to that. Why am I posting about this? I don't know. Uh, this is a weird post, because I was really into... <laughs> White Wolf has never been known for subtlety. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, Guys, so, uh, what I'm waiting for is, where is World of Darkness Prelude Gypsy? Um, I'm still... I gotta get my blood purity to work my gypsy magic. Anyway, so I don't know why I'm posting about some random guy groping me. But apparently I did. I just leave it as it is because it's got truth in it. <laughs> okay. Um, so I hang out with Alex at the mar at the makerspace. Uh, at the is makerspace Alex where... concerned that you just put a blog post where you said that you were like He is not I have not friended him on Facebook. Oh, okay. So, you know, he doesn't what he doesn't know is fine. Alright, so it's Sunday, not a lot of kids at the makerspace. Um Anyway, so we're working on a 3D printer. Yep. So, okay. What are we? What are we modeling? We're we're modding. We're modding. Modding Nekomimi. Nekomimi. Moving cat ear diadems that respond to brain waves. Okay. I'm gonna assume it's anime bullshit. Um, okay. And well, he he is a nerd. He is a yeah. nerd. Probably is. He probably has fantasies about anime girls. Um, oh, he looks very endearing. His tall body folded into a little stool, like a benevolent insect. <laughs> <laughs> when you think of men you're attracted to, I often think of benevolent. I always, I always <laughs> compare what them was to that. Insects. I'm like, you know, that guy, he looks kind of like a beetle. He's got a big, stocky body and little arms and legs. <laughs> what a hot man, I guess. Okay. Hi. I say. Oh, God. So, Alex looks up at you and smiles at you. He's got smudges of super glue all over his Miskatonic University t-shirt. Oh, yes! He's got a Miskatonic <laughs> t-shirt! God. Jewels. Oh, God above. And I hug him. Oh, we're gonna be super together, though! 
tobacco and coffee. Does this guy smoke? I've been, it's good because I know I've been smoking for, my voice has gotten a little better since I've been reading me, but you know. Yeah. So he obviously smokes too. I did not notice that there was a Call of Cthulhu shout out in this the first time. Yeah, I you know. Miskatonic you. <sighs> so you're not mad about Friday night? Not anymore, but you stupid. Alex says and gently <laughs> headbutts you. Don't do stupid things. <laughs> you headbutt him back. Okay. I promise. Man, that beetle boyfriend of yours, he's uh, <laughs> this is really he awesome. He looks at the mess of the table in front of him. How's the project? Yeah. Oh, that's that. me. How's the project? It's okay. Now Alex nods to himself. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, I'm going. <laughs> uh, I, think he is, loving it. I think he is high out of his mind right now. <laughs> if this is the, if this were at the Boys and Girls Club, this is when you would call for one of those random drug tests. Yeah, yeah, Alex, you need to go down and uh, pee in a cup. All right. You so I do it myself uh, well, he with my left. with some circuits and soldering iron. Whoop. It's a restful sort of silence. Eventually, your stomach rumbles. You forgot lunch. Also, Damn your it. Wrists hurt. Got one. Well, because I'm on the laptop. I've got carpal tunnel. So, I'm going to be off now. I say to Alex, will you will you come home with me if you're done? I'd love to, Alex says, but I've got a <laughs> date with Eric, remember? It's not cheating work? if it's it is, gay. It is cheating. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm cheating ah, if he goes so out with another does. guy. <laughs> it's got a date with Eric. Oh, I passed up two sex opportunities. Well, only so, one. Well, I could have had Mona. Mona, you whatever the hell. Ricky. I mean, if we're counting people, you oh, don't get that's choices true. I, oh my goodness, I had three. I had three opportunities. Uh, one of them was with a man, though, so that would have been cheating. That would have been cheating. That would have been all right. So uh, Monday, can we? Have a booty call Monday. Alex nods. Monday. You okay. Leave him like so I leave him like I found him. Fiddling with his stuff. And again, apparently I'm going to bike home. All right. The rain rakes your face like needles. In this town, you're somehow Ow. always going against the wind. It's only afternoon, but it's already getting dark. Headlights gleam through the drops. Tires hiss on the wet asphalt. And they've spelt tires the European way. <laughs> with a Y. <laughs> Another okay. thing. All right. Me. All right. All right. Complain. Hey, right. continue. And then you complain. You take, yeah. You take the shortcut <laughs> through uh, Pildum Park. It's, uh, not too dark yet to find your way. You almost fall off your bike as the chain slips off. Shit. You're in the middle of the trees next to a little art installation that vaguely resembles glowing hippos resting on the ground. Someone is sitting on one of the luminous humps. He gets... Uh, up to hop off the butt. He gets up and hop off the butt. Is this Gabriel? Yeah, he wants to have a luminous hump with you, I guess. Uh, hey, Ellen. you recognize Gabriel's voice. I prefer insect men <laughs> to in a windswept way. All right? I want my men insecticide, insexual. <laughs> in, 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 insexual, yes. <laughs> insexual. That is, that is the word I made up. All right, so, hey, I say... Uh, fancy meeting you here. Bike trouble? Uh, bike trouble. You can smell them from here. Nag, oh, champa, wow. and sweat. Okay. Everyone swear, has, uh, like, smells awful, according to this game. Uh, apparently. This guy's like a hippie, right? Yeah. Erica's gonna fiddle with Alex's stuff, apparently. Alright. I'm afraid I'm not very good with bikes, he says. Um, yeah, uh, it's okay. Uh, I can just walk it home. I'll walk you, he replies. And just yeah. like that, he's next to you. Cigarette, he holds one out. Uh. The cold or the dark or the frustration, you normally don't smoke. <laughs> for some reason, yeah, you have a craving. If I don't smoke, oh, then uh, Alex smelled his tobacco. You know, it's it's horrible for non-smokers to be the smoker because the stale smoke is disgusting. Apparently, um, I take the cigarette. You know, be nice to have a choice at this right. point. Be it's nice. It's a clove cigarette. You haven't had one in ages. It crackles as you inhale, leaving a sugary residue on your lips. Oh, 
Gabriel says and touches your arm. I've been thinking about you since the last time we met. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'd like to show you something. Up close, his smell is almost overpowering. <laughs> you move away slightly. <laughs> what? <laughs> a secret. What do you want to show me? You want to show me your penis? I already said I want to see it. Darkness has almost fallen now. The light of the street lamps illuminating patches of the ground where you walk. You cross one of the roads that lead through the park, then head for the little hedged space pre uh, pretentiously named uh, Galatea's Grove. Have you ever noticed these hedges are hollow? Gabriel says. I love that you don't get a choice about this either, like you're just going with no. it. He stops you just as you pass through the opening of one of the sides. If only, He's if right. only I could make the threat. The hedge is maybe three meters wide. In the middle is a dark space. Aren't you curious what's inside? <laughs> um, oh, and I'm going to probably make noise because I'm typing. Yep. Um, <laughs> I am cold, he's weird, and I am not interested. Or do you want to go have sex with him in a bush? He's going to kill me if I have sex with him. So, he's cold, weird, a murderer, and you're not interested? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's like a no-brainer here. Like, why, why didn't they just assume that one? Not interested, you say. I'm cold and it's dark, and I'm w and walking inside of a hedge is kind of low on my priorities right now. No! There is nothing worse. Ew! I see, Gabriel says. Well, it so happens that you need to go in there anyway. I told you I have a secret to show you. <laughs> Rape! Rape! <laughs> RAPE! I start screaming. <laughs> RAPE! Uh, no, you repeat. The <laughs> word spills like syrup from your lips. Your face feels numb. Gabriel takes a deep drag of his cigarette and blows the smoke in your face. It envelops you in a stinging, spicy cloud. <laughs> Shush, he says. I don't think so. Uh, so he huh? casts a stinking cloud on you. Apparently. And you fail your con save. Uh, you're on the ground. Someone is dragging you. Raindrops on the foliage. The sound is the color of bruises. You're inside the hedge on your knees. Nausea burns at the back of your throat. Gabriel is kneeling in front of you, hands on your shoulders. What? You manage. A hedge is a border between two places, Gabriel says conversationally. A threshold. I would like to cross it with you into a very special place. Oh, I don't want to cross any threshold with you. His voice is hypnotic. The smell of incest and musky sweat envelops you. Your head spins. He whispers incest? something in a language you don't recognize, then draws his thumb over your eyelids. You smell bright blood. Like the beast said, come and see. Gabriel okay. hauls you to your feet and pushes you out of the hedge. Uh, yeah. You're yeah, back yeah. in. <laughs> you have choices in this game in the weirdest spots. Um... <laughs> Back in Gal You're back in Galatea's Grove, but not. The street lights are gone. The city is gone. You're standing on a plane. Around you, the hedges are flicking flicker in and out of space. Above, the sky is suddenly cleared. There are too many stars. They ripple as if vast shapes swim along among them. All right. Doesn't my mind magic protect me from this guy? Um, no. Apparently not. Okay. <laughs> This is where, like, uh, the storyteller, I guess, was presumably just assuming you'd go into the Umbra with him, and you're like, I don't want to. He's like, uh, look, he just knocks you out and takes you there. All right, so we got the noise of pipe and drums. Yep, the statue of Galatea has changed. There's something about her shape that makes your mind tilt. There are worlds beyond the one you know, Gabriel whispers. The place you call reality is just a claustrophobic little corner. It's doomed to fail. I could show you so much more. Your world could become so much more. You're gonna kill me! He points into the distance. A dark hill rises up against the starry sky. On top of it stands what looks like a ferris wheel, adorned with colorful lights. The sound of voices, that smell of burnt sugar, snatches of lamenting music. Gabriel's eyes are enormous, glinting wetly in the light from the galaxy's core. They're waiting, he says. We're celebrating the death of your world and the beginning of the new. Uh-huh. When you were little, you had an aching sensation that there was a hole in the world somewhere else. And that somewhere else was waiting. This is it. This is really it. 
Uh, huh. Are we excited about the hole in the world? <laughs> or are we not? Or are we concerned? I, really, I love it when the story tells me what my feelings were. I don't remember this sensation. Possibly if I actually had an aching kid. Um, I would be excited about this, but... Has his attempt to rape you suddenly made you trust him, or...? No, no, because I feel violated, so I'm gonna say no. Alright. I, I don't remember and exactly, I have... but I'm like 99% sure if you say yes, he just kills you. Okay, because... Well, I figure I'm gonna be his sacrifice, right? Yeah. For whatever he's doing, yeah. So I, I've got chat confirmation that we don't know here. Okay. <laughs> You've been drugged <laughs> the cigarette. You stumble away from him. You're crazy. Gabriel lets out a low laugh. You say tomato, I say tomato. Uh, he holds out a hand to you. Come on, we're holding a funeral for civilization. It'll be great. The sounds of voices become louder and the braying music and uneven beat. Light blooms and fades. If I had a choice back at the cigarette, I would have said no. tracks across your vision. Do you know what the word carnival means, Gabriel says, with a voice that coats you in roses? It means farewell to the flesh. That's what we're doing. Farewell, flesh. You shake your head. Your brain rattles. Jangling electric shocks. You take out your phone. Rewind? How do you even phone? Why is the display rippling? Gabriel comes closer. Shit! So here are a couple of options. You can, uh, run. You can use the prayer beads. This is kind of like where you choose your basic alignment. Uh, okay, so this or is how do, we're going to die. Or you can and call Ricky. So if we call Ricky, we go, obviously, with technocracy, right? If we yep. do prayer beads, we become nine traditions. Do we have to be the celestial chorus? Um, it never really specifies what tradition no, you join. It's just the nine traditions. All right, so, all right, so uh, yeah, let's go prayer beads. That seems to be the consensus here. Is there a way to actually... Because running is just going to get me killed. Running does just get you killed, yeah. I'm yeah. saying if there's a way to, uh, like, save it here, but there's not. Rocks are going to fall and I die. All right. All right. So we're, well, using, will... we're using the prayer beads? You're joining we're going to go to the prayer beads, yes. Okay. Prayer beads, prayer beads. They're in the pocket of your parka. You take them out. They shimmer in the starlight. Nizar, Mona, you shout, help! You're calling on them, Gabriel says. You don't know what you're doing. He comes closer and closer. You stumble backwards. The beads vibrate in your hand, singing like damp fingers on a glass. There's a sudden pressure on your head, and your ears pop. Stop right there! Mona's voice. You turn around. Wasn't it originally... It wasn't originally Mona, wasn't it? Wasn't it... Muna? I thought it was Muna, but maybe the original that was the that was the typo was the original one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I thought it was Muna, and I was gonna be like Arabic. No, nope. all right. Muna's voice. Okay. Well, she's emigrated, so she's Anglicanized her name. No. Okay, sounds fine. Anyway, so uh, you uh, turn around. Mona and Nazar are standing behind you, hands joined. Gabriel abruptly comes to a halt. They will ruin you, he says. His voice breaks with despair. They will ruin everything. Get behind us, Julia, Nazar says calmly. This one is ours. You throw yourself behind Nazar and Mona, who keep their eyes fixed on Gabriel. <laughs> this woman is under our protection, Mona says. Gabriel laughs. Your protection? Your time is over. It's our turn now. We'll see about that, Mona replies. Nazar claps one, his hands once, a sharp crack, and calls out in Arabic. Mona calls out in response. Suddenly the grove is full of people. No, not just people. It's a grove full of Mona's and Nazar's, all standing in a ring around Gabriel, hands joined. As you watch, they begin to circle Gabriel. You can't tell which ones are the real Mona and Nazar. It's that Pokemon attack. Yeah. Gabriel tries to break out of the circle, but is thrown back as if by an electric fence. The circle spins faster and faster. They're chanting now, in the same words over and over again. Nazar calling out their baritones. Mona's sopranos responding. You can't stop me! Gabriel shouts. He raises his arms and opens his mouth. Something between a scream and a song emerges. He sings the world out of focus. He claps a rhythm and cracks it and the cracks of his palms like explosions. 
and the crack of his palms like explosions, and your heart skips along. All right. Uh, All right. It shares through Mona's and Azar's song, and they flicker, coalescing into themselves again next to you. Why didn't you just fly upward? Um, I don't know. Then the revelers are there, in a wave of frankincense and burnt sugar, and the beat of the carnival, the creatures and uncreatures in silk and sweet and sweat and jewels, the gleaming teeth, uh, eyes burning, a uh, procession of terror and wonder, Gabriel yeah. laughs, is a burst of copper bells. He laughs and then screams as the revelers lift him up, kiss him, tear at him, pull him apart. He disappears into the press of bodies. Wonderful. Okay, All that right. was in front of him right there. That is why you do not deal with demons. Uh, two okay. pairs of hands lead you away. Not stars, but branches overhead. Streetlight filtering through the foliage. Water dripping on white beam leaves. Your bike standing in the rain. The way home feels shorter than it should have. The siblings walk on either side of you. Nazar leads the bike. Your hands don't quite seem to work. They're shivering uncontrollably. Okay. Ooh, ooh. I get to say a swear word. What the fuck happened? Where did I just go? Sideways, Mona says. <laughs> oh! There are parts of this world that are invisible to normal people. You stepped into one of those parts. It's a good thing you called us. They could have ended... That could have ended very badly. Yeah, I could have called Ricky too, but I won't tell her that. <laughs> but who is he? A perversion, Mona says. But you don't have to worry about him anymore. Let's get you home. You can tuck me in, Mona. <laughs> You're not sure how they found the way, but there is your apartment building, and there is your front door. <laughs> Where are you staying? Oh, that's you, but whatever. Where are you staying? I'm going to let him stay with me now. Uh, Where are you oh, staying? Fuck, we went into quiet. Hmm. Oops. Okay. All right. You're standing on a plane. Above, an enormous striped <laughs> sphere covers half of a deep black sky. You can feel, rather than hear, the grating noise of its turning on its axis. It bathes the plane in orange light. The grass below reaches to your knees. It rustles in a faint wind. The air smells of incense and rot. Huh. A lone hill rises out of the plane, silhouetted against the enormous sphere in the sky. Something like Is a Ferris it? wheel stands at the top. Yes. Am I looking up at a naked woman? Is that what the picture uh, on this? <laughs> it is a statue of okay. a naked woman. That's of important to note because Twitch uh, won't let you uh, show naked women, I don't think. But this is a statue, so we're a okay. It's okay. Art. All right. Okay. So, um, all right. So I'm looking. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's a, a set of stairs leading down. So I can go to the hill, or I can go on the stairs. Yep. Anybody have a preference? Hill or stairs? I feel either one um, is probably not going to be good. <clears throat> or they both lead to the same place. We are in the quiet, you know. Uh, hill. Let's go for the hill. All right, we're going hill. Hank. We're going to go meet Hank in the hill. <laughs> Slim, tall, <laughs> wooden houses stand upright in the hillside. Uh, here and there, drawing aside to reveal cobbled streets spiraling up towards the top. The streets seem empty of life. You walk between the narrow houses, paneled in the dark wood. Uh, cool, the windows, I can it reference. <laughs> <laughs> the windows and doors look strangely flat. When you walk closer to inspect, you realize that they're all painted on. You walk on through the streets uh, that become steeper and steeper, winding around the hill in swirling figure eights. You finally arrive at the top, a cobbled plaza where the air smells like burnt sugar. All right. The wheel rises up before you, its gondola swaying in the breeze. There are still no signs of life, no noise except the crack of the gondola and the background rumble of the planet turning on its axis. All right, we're exploring the plaza, or are we stepping into the gondola? (laughs) 
Go with the gondola. Alright, gondola it is. The gondolas are simple wire cages with two branches facing each other. You step onto the platform under the ferris wheel and then into the gondola at the bottom. It sways slightly under your weight. As soon as you get inside, the wheel creaks into motion. You have to sit down to avoid falling over. The wheel turns with an infinitely slow motion. As the gondola rises, you can see more and more of the landscape around you. The plane below stretches off as far as the eye can see, flat and featureless. The striped planet above bathes it in a ghostly light. Nothing moves in the town below. The only light comes from the odd little house in the middle of the plaza, where the light spills out from the windows. The wheel crag creaks to a halt just as you reach its highest point. You wait for a long moment before for something to happen. All you can hear is the rumble of the planet above and the wind in your ears. All right, this is obviously not real. Screw this, and or I am not in. A so uh, I'm here alone, right? I don't have friends there. How did I get sucked into quiet since they were the one using magic? I don't know. Once again, I don't know exactly what triggers quiet in this game. I know if you just keep using magic, you eventually go into it. All right. Well, anyway, screw this. This is obviously not real. All right. I need to get back and see Ricky, who had a much better explanation for all of this. Well, you went, uh, you know, you didn't accept Ricky. Yeah, I know. Well, it may have been a mistake on my part. This isn't real. You're tired of this nonsense. You stand up and walk over to the opening at the other end of the gondola. The Ferris wheel stands on the edge of a drop-off in front of you. The plane stretches out towards the horizon. The plane below pulls at you. You let it. You step into the void. You fall for a long time. Your stomach contracts and releases, contracts and releases. You spin around in the air, first with your feet down, then diving head first. The ground rises up towards you with an infinite slowness. When you land, you land flat on your belly. Your ribs collapse. Your stomach bursts open. You feel the crunch of vertebrae, tibia, fibula, uh, ulna. Mm -hmm. Your jaw shatters. There is no pain. All right, well, you died. You mm -hmm. lie in a crater, bathing in your own entrails and blood. The grass is soft, mm -hmm. yielding. It embraces you, pulls you down. You sink as if in quicksand. The, glass fill, the grass fills your nose and mouth. Uh, you reflexively choke, although your lungs have already collapsed. What remains of your chest heaves as your body settles into the ground. It's the circle of life. The soil closes over your head. You can do nothing but feel and listen as the ground pulls you downward. Your mouth is filled with dirt. Your nose is stuffed with it. Your eyes are gritty with it. Something cold and soft brushes up against you, then disappears. The soil gives way to rock and pushes up against your ruined chest. The smell of granite and gunpowder, what is left of your bones, crackle. Okay. There is a crevice sure. just below. You are really, really dead, basically, is what they're trying to do. Yeah, I am just like going to the center of the earth. There is a crevice just below your face. It sucks you in. You squeeze through the crack. Face compressed, arms locked to your sides. Then the pressure lets up. You are in free fall once more. Water closes over your head. You come to a floating on your back. You're in a cavern. Little blue lights dot the ceiling. You flail your arms. They move like they should. You swim for the shore to pull yourself up onto a rock. The cavern blah, 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 is quite blah, blah, small. Blah, 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 blah. Let's go. Yes, I get it. I'm going through the quiet. Got it. Okay. Perhaps 20 meters across, the ceiling is covered in a lichen that grows that glows a gentle blue. The air smells like a room where someone has been sleeping for a long time. The shallow pool reflects the lights in the ceiling. And something else, a figure crouching across from you. It looks like a man, but his head is crowned with a deer's horns. He's right, watching okay, you with okay. eyes gleaming in the flint blue what light. What I want to know, what I want to know is what the hell does a room smell like where somebody's been sleeping for a long time? What is that smell? Um, once again, we're back to stale sweat. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, anyway, we're moving on. Oh, good, we get a conversation. Who are you? Who do you think? I don't know. Good, and who are you? Julia. Are you sure? What do you mean? You died. Death is transformation. What happens now? You move on, as the dead do. But where? The horned man merely looks at you. You look around the cavern, and there doesn't seem to be a way out. Sorry, I gotta wait here. It's all right. There we go. Uh, how do I get out of here? Uh, the horned man is silent. Here, he says after a while. He calmly reaches up and plucks out his left eye, then tosses it across the pool to you. You catch it. It's warm and wet in your hand. What do I do with it? As you please. 
<laughs> you put the eye in your pocket. Uh, you know, bite into it. Juicy. All right, so uh, I put, I actually do put the eye in my pocket. That is not. Yeah, so not I can joke. throw myself into the pool or I can approach the man. The one-eyed man with the horns. Throw myself into the pool. He used to have two eyes. Um, <laughs> apparently we're going for the guy. All right, <laughs> get some. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's. I figure I'm dead. You edge so. around the pool towards the horned man. As you get closer, he stands up. He's short. He doesn't quite reach your shoulders. Up close, his face is very old and lined. His expression doesn't change as he grabs your shoulders, and with unexpected strength, tosses you into the pool. Your choice was very, pretty much academic. Yeah, okay. The water closes over your head. Your lungs fill with water. You refuse to panic. You merely spread your arms and fall. I was going to give him his eye back, but you know. The concrete floor is hard. Your jaw cracks again. You cough up water. Where am I? You're in a seemingly endless corridor. The opening you came through has vanished. Suddenly it hits you like a blow. You have a body, and the body is tired and hungry and thirsty. There has to be a way out of here. You start walking. You walk down the corridor for a long time. Nothing changes. You wonder if you're getting anywhere at all. The walls are featureless and smooth. Your feet make no noise. Sometimes you think you can see something moving in the distance, but whatever it is stays just out of view. Oh, I'm eating the eyeball. <laughs> we don't need to wait, I don't think, to consult with chat. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure, eating the eyeball. I'm pretty sure like, chat yeah, knows the right choice. Yeah, no, we're eating the eyeball. All right. You put the eyeball in your mouth and bite down on it. It bursts on your tongue in a flood of tangy saltiness. <laughs> so you gross. force yourself to swallow. Was this the right thing to do? Who knows? Nothing happens. You keep walking. <laughs> I ate some guy's eyeball. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> the thing in the distance is indeed movement. You break into a run. There is someone there, trudging down a corridor. Hey, you shout. The figure doesn't react. You get closer. It looks like a woman about your height. Hey, you say again. The other person stops. You touch her shoulder. She turns around. Your own face stares back at you. She gropes along the wall. Her nails catch on something and she pulls. It's a door and it opens. The other side is your bedroom. Someone looks who looks like you is in the bed, eyes closed. The girl is with your the girl with your face takes your hand and leads you over to the bed. She pushes you onto the mattress. Then you who lies on the bed moves slightly to leave you to leave you room. You lie down next to yourself. On the other side of yourself, the girl with your face lies down too. You open your mouth to say something. Your mind goes blank. Hey, there you go. All right. Oh, do I get to have sex with her or... Uh... Nope, you found some friends, Mona says. We'll be all right. And then they leave you at the front door and oh, walk away okay, in the rain. So... Uh, oh, oh, wow. Now she just like, Wow. He just rejects me. All right, so what, this is me. Okay, some of what Gabriel said rang true. I didn't like him before originally when we tried to have sex. I didn't like it when he tried to rape me. But now that I've seen him torn apart by the demons he summoned, maybe that is what I want to do. I'm thinking that's what I want to do. Um, um, or my other choice is I'm so lucky to have Mona and... How are these choices? I don't know. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Apparently, I'm lucky to have Mona. And All right. Even though they've just rejected me. Here. Uh, sideways worlds? Sideways worlds. You think about back to what Mona and Nazar dancing. It reminds you of the Sufis. Is that what they are? Sufi magicians? After everything you've seen, why not? They're, that has some implications, though, like God. So, uh, are you going to drink yet more tea, or just go to bed? Oh, wow. I don't know, dude. <laughs> We've had, like, five pots today. Is that enough, <laughs> or do we need another? And I believe it was over the weekend, the entire weekend, because wasn't it Friday that I had tea? I and know. then, I think, anyway, um, um, 
hey, no, apparently there's a wonderful woman in my bed, so I should go there. That <laughs> All right. Me. We're nothing wrong. Bed. Nothing wrong with a little self pleasure. Right. So let's just go to bed. It's not cheating if it's masturbation. Uh, no, it is not. <laughs> you crawl into bed. It's only nine And that o'clock. woman in my bed knows what she's doing. But you so. have no energy for anything else. The world feels out yeah. of joint. You wish Alex were here, but what would you tell him? Hold me, I think the world is broken. It takes no, a long I wouldn't time say that. to fall asleep. When you dream, you dream of Gabriel, of a procession moving to an uneven beat. 